So we've talked a lot about the derivative. We're starting to formulate kind of what the derivative is. Um, and I want to start connecting it to some other things we've already talked about, and I want to start connecting it to some pretty typical problems you'll see in this stage in calculus. So first of all, with continuity, we can say that if f is differentiable at a point c, then it's also continuous at that point. So in other words, what we're saying is that differentiability implies continuity. If it's differentiable, then it's continuous. However, the sentence doesn't work both ways. Continuity does not imply differentiability. So quick example, and I'm going to do a better one in class, but something that is supposed maybe not differentiable at C, so maybe I've got an asymptote. So here, that's C. And here's my graph. Well, it's not differentiable at C because the function doesn't exist there. And it's also very much, so it's not continuous. Um, this is, I suppose, a poor example of the reverse because here it's not continuous and therefore it is not differentiable. Um, but that's also not what the sentence is saying. The second statement here is saying something like this where with a sharp point and this is actually the function that we'll look at in class, is continuous. I actually could have drawn that without picking up my pencil. I just didn't, so I made sure I got that real sharp point. Um, it is continuous at that point C. It is not differentiable at that point C. And we'll explain why in class, because I don't want to take up too much time in the video. Um, but any of these sharp points are not differentiable. So it's just a quick example of why the statement doesn't work the, both, uh, the other way around. But the key is that if it's differentiable, it is continuous. So con differentiability implies continuity. Before we go any further, our book doesn't show you this yet, and I don't know why. Um, because when we jump into these types of problems that you're going to see in a second, you don't want to waste your time using the limit definition of the derivative when you've got more important work to do. So I'm gonna teach you some shortcuts now. They're gonna come back in the next section, but it's important that you have them to try to speed up the process ahead of time. So there are two key um, rules that I wanna start with now. The first one is that the derivative of a constant is zero. And this makes sense maybe intuitively if what's the slope of a constant function, right? If here's my graph and here is my constant function, the slope of that graph is zero. And if derivative is just slope, then the derivative is also zero. So we might say that the derivative of a constant C is zero. The second one is what we call the power rule and it is essential, it is an essential part of calculus. The power rule says that the derivative of anything that looks that has a power, so anything of the form say x to the n, can be expressed this way, n times x to the n minus 1. So how does this work? The power comes down, actually I'm going to use a totally different color, you can see that the power comes down front and becomes a coefficient. And then I decrease the power by one. So for example, the derivative of x cubed is three x squared, right? Power comes down, lower the power by one. The derivative of x to the 150th follows the same rule, power comes down, lower the power by one. This is the power rule, and the power rule is crucial um, throughout calculus. So it's something that you wanna make sure you can just do cold, and we're, we're gonna do a lot of practice with it. One of the classic problems in calculus is to find the equation of the tangent line at a given point. So let's walk through that process. So 
given f of x equals 2 minus 3x squared, find the equation of the line tangent to f of x at x equals 1. There's a lot going, down here, going on here, so let's break down the problem. If we're given a function, we want to find the line tangent, so we have a line, tangent to f of x at x equals 1. So I'll put that in a different color. Tangent to f of x at x equals 1. Three important pieces of information. I kept this separate because this, is, this gives us our process. Find the equation of the line. Stop. Ultimately, then, my goal is to have something of the form y equals mx plus b. If you think back to Algebra 2, maybe even Algebra 1, the way that we did this, our process for these types of problems, is to start with what we'd call point-slope form. and eventually work our way down to slope-intercept form. So we're going to follow exactly that process. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We might not know where to go from here right now because we don't really know how to plug anything in. Well, let's see. I have an x. And if I need a point, right, I need a y1, x1, x1, y1, can I find that? So, well, x1, y1. Well, let's call x1, 1. Let's use the information that I'm given. y1, then, would just be whatever happens when I get f of 1, when I plug 1 in. So 2 minus 3 times 1 squared is just going to give me negative 1. So now I have a point. This is good. Uh, let's highlight that. So now I have a point. That's going to give me my x1 and my y1. The only other piece I'm missing, because I want to leave y and x alone, I want to keep that as part of my equation, because that's going to end up in the final answer. All I'm missing now is my slope. And the question now becomes, do I have a way to find the slope? I do, right? We're told that we want to find the equation of a line tangent to f of x. And when we want to find tangent lines, when we want to find the slope of the tangent line, we take the derivative of the function. So the other thing we want to do is find the derivative of the function at that point. So let's start, let me move this out of the way here, and let's start with a little bit of side work. Well, let's start just by finding the derivative of x. Well, I told you that the derivative of a constant is 0. Normally, I wouldn't write that in, but just for the sake of showing you. And the derivative of 3x squared, well, we can leave the coefficient. And we know that the trick for x squared is to drop the power in front as a coefficient and then lower the power by 1, so 2x to the first. And so I get negative 6x in general. Well, specific to x equal to 1, I get negative 6. I just plug in 1 for x. So now I have my slope. And here's the other piece of the puzzle that I was missing. Now I've got all of my information. Now I can go through and plug in. So y1 was negative 1, so minus negative 1 becomes positive 1. m is negative 6. x stays. x1 is just 1. At this point, it's all algebra, so I'm going to say y plus 1 equals negative 6x plus 6. y equals negative 6x plus 5. This is the equation of my tangent line at x equals 1. So a couple key things here. You always want to find, so in addition to your goal here, your process is there. But along the way in your process that I want to maybe elaborate on, you have kind of a checklist. Part of your process is finding the point and the slope. 
right, to find the point, we took the x value we were given, we plugged it into the function that gave us x1 and y1. To find f prime of x, that's your slope. That's going to give you, whoops, that's going to give you your slope. So how did I do that? I took the derivative of the function, uh, which is right here. We're going to learn some tricks to do this with more complex functions throughout the chapter. I find the derivative of the function, and again, I plug in that x value I'm given. That gives me a number that I can plug everything in, and at that point, simplify it until you get to, um, until you get to the equation of a line and slope intercept form. Naturally, IB is not just going to stop there. We're going to take this one small step farther. I promise it's just a small step. So the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line. And it's going to be at the same point that we're using for the tangent line. But it's perpendicular to the tangent line. Why would you care about this? Well, this has a big application to physics. right? In physics, especially if you're taking IB physics currently, you might have heard of the normal force. And the normal force also acts perpendicular to the force being applied. Um, so on a graph, maybe it would look something like this. If I have, here is my graph. And here, whoops, here is my tangent line. This is my tangent line. The normal line is going to go perpendicular to that. So the normal line is maybe going to come this way. It's perpendicular. And again, when we talk about physics, this is a lot more applicable and a lot more useful. So we practice it in IB math as well. Find the equation of the normal line of f of x at x equal to 1, given f of x above. Well, this is helpful. Um, we've already done a lot of the legwork because we just dealt with this function. Our goal is the same, right? We want to find a line. Whoops, so we're gonna stick with the same process. Start here. Which means I need to find the same things. I need to find a point and I need to find a slope. Well, we've already done the work from the last problem because I'm dealing with the same function. I know that my, um, my point will be the same. We're talking about the exact same point in the graph. That's great, that's helpful, that saves us a lot of time. If you can draw on things that you've done already in a problem, do it. Don't waste your time doing the problem over again. The other thing I need to know is my slope. Well, we know that the normal line is perpendicular, perpendicular to the tangent line. And the slope, of something that's perpendicular is equal to one is the sorry the negative reciprocal right it's opposite and reciprocal so one over m of the tangent line so opposite and reciprocal so if the slope before was uh, excuse me this should have said negative six I'm glad I did the problem right before the slope is negative six from before it's opposite and reciprocal, so the slope of the normal line is positive one-sixth, negative reciprocal. Well, at this point, the process is exactly the same, right? Take your point slope form, oops, substitute in all your information, and simplify one-sixth x minus one-sixth, subtract one, I get one-sixth x minus 7 over 6. And if we were to graph all of these, we would see that um, our slope, of, or sorry, our equation of the tangent line does in fact act as a tangent line and that this line is perpendicular.